Why Twitch and its CEO are currently in massive trouble? Uh-oh. Guys, if I watch this, they might get mad at me. What do you think of when someone mentions the website Twitch.tv? Maybe you think of your favorite streamer. Maybe you think of your favorite esports game. And maybe oh, that's my favorite esports game. You think of a half-naked woman in a kiddie pool indoors. All right, here we Regardless go. Regardless of what your answer is, I'm sure there's some amazing memories tied to it. But when I think of Twitch, I think of a grossly mismanaged circus. A circus that is still not profitable. After <laughs> guys, we're on Twitch right now. We're on, years we're on Twitch right now, guys. <laughs> of existence. Yes, they haven't had one single profitable year ever since they were created back in 2007. Uh -huh. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. What Twitch is also known for is their complete and utter inconsistency and lack of transparency when it comes to their bans in regard to True. Their trust. True. I will say one thing though, I have never been banned on Twitch, which is a little surprising because I've been banned on everything else. I've been banned literally everywhere else. Twitch is the only one that hasn't banned me. Safety team. They show very, and I mean Remember, very clear Twitch is a small, struggling, multi-million dollar company owned by a multi-billion dollar company. Well, just because they make millions in sales doesn't make mean that they're making millions in profit. Tazito, they're completely different things. For instance, if you sold an item for $1,000, but then it costed you $900 to buy that item, you're only making a hundred bucks. And that's minus like, maybe you had to pay some gas, maybe you had to pay shipping, minus all of that stuff. So the amount of revenue that you have has nothing to do with the amount of money that you make. This has been going on mm. since the website's inception. People were hoping that this weird, immature culture of favoritism would go away slowly after Amazon had acquired the website back in 2014 for $970 million. But Damn. as you might have guessed, mm. <laughs> things only got worse. Look, as someone who's been watching Twitch for almost- You know what probably they need to do? This is going to sound terrible, but they probably need to run like an X sweep on, on things. Like how Elon went in and said like, okay, like the people that are useless here, like, sorry, it's time to go. And then how like barely anything changed when that happened. I think that they might, they might have a little issue of dilution of work. 10 years now, I can sit here and make Blow. a one-hour yeah, exactly. video of the inconsistencies when it comes to bans and punishments on the platform. But I'll just show you a couple because it'll be enough for you to understand. Oh no, don't show it on don't show Twitch it employee to put the fries in the bag at a McDonald's. In 2020, the streamer Alinity was dancing on stream. She showed her nipple by mistake. That's considered adult content. In any case, she got banned for one day. Cool. And that makes sense. If it was an accident, right? I mean it's not like she meant to do it on purpose and she just had an accident. I don't think you should be banned for a long time for that. In the same year, 2020, a well-known streamer by the name of Pokimane, who I'm sure you've heard of, opened up a hub link, okay? One of the biggest adult video websites showing what was on the front page. Yes, many videos of people getting penetrated. She said it was an accident. In the end, she only got a warning from Twitch, okay? Not even a ban or anything, an email saying, I don't know. I, I think it was if it was genuinely an accident, I don't really see any reason to ban them if it's their first offense, to be honest. But um, she also is like one of the big streamers. So that, hey, what you did was kind of bad. Please don't do it again. In Fair that enough. same year, yes, I don't know what happened in 2020 in particular. Forsen, a very well-known streamer, clicked on an Imgur link in his chat, something he does all the time. What he didn't know, though, was that it was a GIF. It started off as an image of a meme and then transitioned into a woman sucking on a horse sausage. Yes, you heard that right. A horse sausage. I okay. can't go into more detail. We're on YouTube. Regardless, though, it wasn't intentional. He had no yeah, idea. Yeah, it, was, it, it wasn't intentional. Somebody was messing with him. Troll in chat. What happened? He got banned indefinitely. Yeah. I was being like so generous. That is that's fucked up. <laughs> That's fucked up because it's literally the same thing. Yes, forever with no date of an unban. Only getting his ban reversed after more than a month. Now check this out. A streamer was getting back shots live on stream while replying. I remember when this happened. If you don't know this story, uh, one of uh, there was a streamer that got uh, one full hentai on stream. Let's just say. To chat. This went on for multiple minutes as she was getting railed from behind. She gets banned. 
but for one week. She comes back to streaming and blows up. She has over 30,000 followers. You see the pattern here? Exactly. There is no pattern. Just clear favoritism and malice towards specific streamers. Yeah, mm -hmm. This is why 100%. for a long time, no one could take the platform seriously. In fact, for a long time, there was this running joke. The head of partnerships at Twitch, who has been there for over a decade, even after Amazon buying the mm -hmm. company, was a man called Hassan Bukhari. People would joke that female streamers got special treatment due to Hassan. Those jokes became rumors and those rumors became out of control, especially with all the terrible decisions Twitch was making at the time. Mm -hmm. This prompted Hassan to tweet this in June of 2019, saying, I do not have anything to do with Twitch suspensions or moderation actions. Okay. If you or your friend needs help in this regard, please see this link. I cannot do anything about suspensions or unsuspending you, pinning tweet making many feel sorry for him that, hey, man, maybe these jokes are getting out of hand. Well, <laughs> these jokes were not crazy enough because not even a year after this, in 2020, Twitch fired Hassan Bukhari over abuse of power. It keeps happening, guys. It what, what really? Wow. So shocked. As the Me Too movement was going on, people were Oh, my God. It's all... It's, oh leaking messages of Hassan not only asking for these inappropriate favors from female creators, but also showing them off to his friends. There was a certain Holy shit. Instance ...where he received nudes from a certain female Twitch streamer, and the first thing he did was join a voice chat with his friends and show it off, saying, oh my god, guys, I just received their boobs. Oh my god, check this out. Dude, why is it always that, like, the people... The people who are always, like, in trust and safety are always the least trustworthy and the least safe. Where's the lie? It's always these people every fucking time. The more a person virtue signals about how pure they are, the more the dude, the dirtier they are. They're fucking filthy every single time. This man was the head of partnership. Remember when you okay, asked for partner on this site after moving from own as well, which he that was the guy who had the final say. Was that him? When they asked for partner after moving from owned? Yeah, that's actually why I, I stopped. I, I, I kind of stopped streaming was because like my old site died. I was a partner on own 3D. I, I was like asking if I could like transfer like partnership over and uh, like just to stream on Justin Twitch. I don't remember what it was called back then. But yeah, that's why I didn't stream. Appropriate images as a female creator. And bear in mind, this was six years after Amazon had dished almost a billion dollars to acquire the website. This uh -huh. showed us that even after all these years, Twitch had the organizational structure of a startup. Except it only had the negative aspects of a startup with no <laughs> positives. Anything from favoritism to cringy ass bro oh, culture boy. to unprofessionalism and a lot. I mean, a lot of moments where they were just winging it. Many people place the blame on Emmett Shear, one of the original five co-founders of Twitch.tv or Justin.tv as uh -huh. it was known before the name change. The public perceived Emmett as someone who What I heard is that what I heard is that the problem was that he didn't really understand like the whole streaming thing is what I heard. I don't I don't know. I don't know him, but that's just what I heard. Zero control over the company. As someone who was more concerned with network engineering, with the website's infrastructure, rather than its culture and trust and safety policies. After resigning in March of 2023, people were hoping that his- To trust and safety? Why is it always? It's always the most corrupt. I just, I don't, I don't get it. It's it, every single time. Successor would finally be able to steer Twitch in the right direction and make it go from unprofessional frat club to an actual professional functioning company who is a subsidiary of Amazon. The person replacing him as Twitch CEO was the person who used to be the president of Twitch, who okay. is Dan Clancy, someone who used to work at NASA and Google and somehow Dang. ended up at Twitch. From day one, he did his best to show everyone that he was the hip and cool CEO, someone who sought to understand streamers at a core and fundamental level to it's give them exactly thing. what they want. He went on to do so many collabs with bigger streamers, smaller streamers, you name it, and even started streaming himself weekly on his Twitch channel, really emphasizing the fact that he was here. And just like when Amazon was buying Twitch, people were yet again hopeful. Hello, fellow kids. I don't think this is a bad thing, though. This was finally going to lead Twitch in the direction it so desperately needed to go to. But guys, <laughs> the website got infinitely 
worse. There was yet again a complete lack of direction. I'm sure you remember the whole fiasco that happened with the pools, hot tubs, and beaches oh, category. That was, that was a fun simply art. did not know what it wanted to be or who to cater to. They would always keep revising their terms of service oh, to the point art. where things don't really make much sense even by today's standards because things are not enforced equally. <clears throat> Favoritism is still very much present. One of the biggest incidents on Twitch, just in general because of how ridiculous it is, was in 2024 at the end of April. A streamer by the name of Denims on the left here said on stream that she would pay $30,000 to whoever made Asmongold disappear. That's illegal. Like, actually, what the fuck? Yes, I'm serious. This actually happened. She didn't say, hey, guys, I'm just joking. Haha. <laughs> no. She said it with a serious straight face like the one you're seeing right here. And unfortunately for Denims, we're not in the American Wild West of the late 1800s. You can't just put a bounty on someone's head like this. Yeah. It's without exaggeration to say that this is a federal crime. It now, is. Now, Twitch's terms of service say that violence on Twitch is taken seriously and is considered a zero tolerance violation. And all accounts associated with such activities on Twitch will be indefinitely suspended. Yeah. And yet here she was calling for her fellow streamer Asmongold's assassination. You would think that Twitch would do something about this, right? Well, <laughs> no. She didn't get banned and she faced zero consequences for doing this. That's Dan Clancy's Twitch. I also need to mention the fact that very recently, in October of 2024, it's illegal for VTubers to show their hips. Yes, virtual characters can't show their hips. Yet when you go to the pools, hot tubs, and beaches category, you see this. May contain sexual themes. I assure you, buddy, they're showing way more than their hips. Some of them are twerking for subs, man. It's not even funny. All of this was to illustrate just how bad Twitch's reputation has become over the years. Sometimes it's hard to believe that a website like this is owned by Amazon or that they even paid a billion dollars for it. But everything I mentioned so far has nothing to do with what's going on right now. This is something that is existential to Twitch as a company, its CEO, and even worse, its parent company, Amazon. You have some pretty big Jewish organizations calling Twitch anti-Semitic. Anything from the Times of Israel to the Anti-Defamation League reached out to Twitch directly and now many are calling for the CEO's resignation. It's a very nasty and highly political situation and I have no interest in taking any sides. So let's try and talk about this in the most neutral, objective way possible. Let's go. This entire issue started with a clip you've no doubt seen already of Asmongold calling Palestinian culture inferior, saying that he's not sorry for everything that's been happening there. These people are not your allies. They are not the same as us. They come from an inferior culture that is horrible. It kills people for their identity mm -hmm. and it is directly antithetical to everything Western values stand for. And it is an inferior culture in all ways. That was the clip summed up. As you can see, though, it went absolutely viral on yep. October 14th when this it happened. This went really crazy. And it was the talk of the internet. Many people were calling on Twitch to ban him, especially since their terms of service talked about incidents like this specifically. This section in the Twitch terms of service is dedicated to protected groups. Anything that portrays a specific group as greedy or unintelligent, comparing groups to animals, insects, pests, parasites. Create speech imagery or emote combinations that dehumanize or per perpetuate negative stereotypes. You name it. And one of them is content suggesting. You know what I've always wondered about this? Ooh, I don't know if I want to go into this. But I will say something to leave a little food for thought. Could a person VTube as a character that is like, say you're not, say, let's just say for the sake of argument that you are, let's just use the one that, that they, that they use all the time. Let's say that you're a white person and that your VTuber character is a black person? Like, can you do that? It's interesting. Protected group members are subhuman, inhuman, or impure. So, of course, there was a strong sentiment that what he had said in that clip fell in that category. That's and Mr. Sam says, they say that it's blackface, but then what about all of the people that have Asian characters? Huh? How about that? Interesting, huh? It's not to say that many weren't on his side. No, in fact, there were. Just like the current conflict between Israel and Palestine going on right now, this was a very divisive issue. 
There were mostly two main opinions about this. The first opinion seeing him as a monster, as someone who didn't care about people's suffering and would go as far as to call them inferior, showing his racist <clears throat> side. The second opinion saw him as a hero, someone who finally said the quiet part out loud, what a lot of people have been mm -hmm. thinking. Regardless, as soon as his rant was done, Hassan Abi, a streamer on Twitch who happens to be a political commentator on, on the extreme left, this is an objective statement by the way, immediately called him on stream and tried his best to explain to him the situation of the whole Palestine-Israel war and why he was being insensitive and wrong in his opinion. After that stream, Asman Gold did something extremely rare. Apologize. He said, looking back on it, I was way too much of an asshole about the Palestine thing. My bad. Of course, no one deserves to have their life destroyed, even Nurgle. if they do things or have these I find aggressive. You guys deserve more than me saying stupid things like that. Is that is kind of funny. Better. When it came to Twitter... That is kind of funny, but I, like, I don't, like, dude, I don't actually... I don't, I don't... I don't know, man. I actually don't think he's a very hateful person at all, really. I think he's actually a lot less hateful than, like, a lot of the mainstream people that are on Twitch, to be honest. I don't even think it's close. I think it's... It's... It's not even close. Many of the comments were not on his side. He was ratioed like there was no tomorrow. Well, folks, he said, my bad. I think that's a wrap. <laughs> Shortly afterwards, the consequences to what he had said truly started appearing. The uh... streaming org he had co-founded by the name of OTK released a statement saying that we do not agree with anything that Asmongold has said and that he will be stepping away from OTK and all of its affiliate companies, such as Starforge, a PC building company, Mad Mushroom, a game development studio under OTK, and Mythic Talent, the talent agency he helped co-found. By the way, fun fact, I'm in this agency. I love Mythic Talent. They're really, really cool. Don't get it twisted, though. The fact that he co-owns it doesn't mean he owns me. I can call him a bald fuck all I want. I can already see the comments under this video. No, this is not how it works. Anyway, <laughs> he had to step away from his leadership positions from all of these companies because they didn't want to associate with him anymore. As this was all uh. happening, yet another company decided to cut ties with him, although temporarily, and that's Twitch. They decided to ban him for two weeks following his comments on Palestine. He then made a video outlining his plans moving forward, that he was going to get his life together, that he was finally going to clean his messy ass house, that he realizes that he's become an unpleasant person in his opinion the more he spent time online, and that he was reached out to by the very same people he called inferior and they were very open to not only forgive him but to have a conversation. So we'll see what he ends up doing. However, as people well, finally Well, the thing is, is I think the issue is that like nowadays, the way culture is right now, is it's really and i want to say this is true i, I think it's 100 percent fair to say that this is true on both sides of the coin that there is a demand for absolute purity when it comes to like are you on the right or are you on the left of the political like thing like you stay on your side of the fence and you better fucking stay there and you better be like all in on that there's absolute a culture of absolute purity where like if you even believe something that's like you know, actually, I'm pretty reasonable about that. And like, I don't, I don't know. I don't think this is a problem. People will fucking dogpile you. So it's like you, you either go all in one way or all in the other way. Otherwise, everybody hates you. And I think there's really no point. Like, who are you apologizing to? Because if you apologize, to, you know, the only people you should be apologizing to, in my opinion, are your close friends and family members and your community. That's it. If the apology is made to people who literally do not care about you at all and they're out there to destroy you, what is the point of apology? It doesn't matter what you do. They're not going to forgive you anyway. So why apologize for something that you didn't mean? I'm not saying Asmongold did this, but I'm saying that it's why I will never apologize to like, to like you know, these mob people, regardless of what side it is, I won't apologize to them. Because they don't actually care what I have to say. It doesn't matter. Even if I change my mind on the topic, I'm st you're still persona non grata, no matter what. So there's no reason. There's no reason to apologize if it's not for yourself, your close friends and family, or your community. It doesn't matter. They wanted and Asmongold was banned, the conversation shifted to other streamers on Twitch that have said things that were just as bad. If I say something 100% reasonable, in my opinion, and I logic it out that it's reasonable, and I say and I say something that's absolutely true and people don't like me for it and they want to cancel me for it. They can eat my fucking ass, honestly. Actually, if not way worse than what he had said about Palestinians that were not yet banned. And if anything, 
were encouraged. And for those of you that are like, oh, like leaflet, like, I don't know. I don't know. How would you look? Would you do that if you were in that situation? Absolutely. Because I've done it before because I have been canceled for for stuff that I didn't actually mean. It's happened. It's literally happened to me. And I literally told them that I'm not going to apologize. They tried to tell me to apologize. And I said, I'm not going to apologize. I don't care. The platform itself. I've literally Most done this people, before. Of course, we're referring to Hassan Abi, the same stream. So I'm not saying this out of my ass as in like, I, I'm just saying this because I'm not in that situation. I'm saying if I was in as if I was in a situation like Asmongold and people took me out of contacts, I would just tell them to, to go fuck themselves because that's Asmongold after that's just his what rant. I would do. Why? Well, you only need a couple of examples. On January 2024, a few months Yo, after thanks for the, the sub, Megro. Thank you. 7th, I really appreciate Sun it. Thank brought you. brought on a Welcome. healthy pirate from Yemen to talk on his stream through a video call. He asked them questions Is this the One Piece guy? in Israel and Palestine about his opinion on numerous things and of mm. course if he watches anime wait he like literally interviewed like a literal criminal <laughs> like like yo let's interview like this literal criminal guy that's pretty fucking crazy to which what the, the hell said, uh, but you know what though i actually think that's very interesting and i think he should be allowed to do that to be honest um i think he should be able to interview people that are crazy and wild on stream uh, like just in general because uh it's just more info for the world to have i think i watch one piece hassan loved the answer his community was he loved simping it. was he simping hard the answer and of course this got me <laughs> hassan was heavily criticized by many on twitch people who weren't even political in nature and yet twitch pretended like it didn't happen they had nothing to say about it let me tell you why that's a big deal on January okay. 17th, around the same exact time Hassan was interviewing the Houthi pirate from okay. Yemen, the U.S. Department of State designated the Houthis as a terrorist organization. Okay. That's because they were attacking commercial ships moving along the Red Sea. They were hindering global trade and attacking innocent people on those vessels that yeah, had nothing to do with the Israel and Palestine war. Yeah, because they're pirates. Terms of Service very specifically outlines a section dubbed terrorism and violent extremism mm -hmm. in which they say that terrorism and violent extremism promote unlawful violence and spread messages of intolerance twitch does not allow content that depicts glorifies encourages or supports terrorism or violent extremist acts. isn't this like all of hassan's crew though acts this includes threatening to or encouraging others to commit acts that would result in serious physical harm or significant property destruction for example you may not want to display or link terrorist or dude you guys want to know a funny a funny story so i i kind of wanted to uh know more about like this this thing that was happening because i know that um a bunch of the hassan crew got banned on twitch and i was really interested in trying to find that like information on it but the only person that had any real information on it was destiny and so i'm there like watching destiny in the living room because it was like the only person that was like at, he was the only person that was actually like going deep on it and my mom comes into the room and she's like I'm what sorry. are you watching leaf and i'm like oh, i'm watching destiny because he's the only one that has any info on this like on any sort of deep level and my mom just looks at me and she goes that's cringe as fuck and then she walks away <laughs> extremist propaganda including graphic <laughs> pictures or footage of terrorist or extremist <laughs> violence even for the purposes of denouncing such content so hassan <laughs> has successfully promoted a terrorist organization as outlined by the u.s department of state i should add that he asked him very softball questions such as do you know what kfc is and do you watch anime this <laughs> wasn't really mom, journalism dude. it was just glorifying revolutionaries like he does all the time he would also show his friend on stream nick polem footage literal footage of the houthis taking over the what in the red what let's see i mean look at this group of people that are like no we care about the palestinians we don't want you bombing them so we're gonna fucking take action and we're gonna try to punish you economically to the best of our ability and they and by god they started doing that and they were doing it real well but the, aren't these private merchants these are private merchants though these aren't military targets so they started and dude, why is God. dude? Why is it only? Oh, I don't know. I don't. Uh, uh, 
I'm just, I'm just, okay, I, I'm gonna say one phrase, I'm gonna leave it at that. Why is it okay for one side to attack civilian targets, but, like... They just attacked <sighs> random ships. Didn't matter they whose ship it, it they was. Were doing it. <laughs> Real well, guys. Twitch said in their terms of service, don't show this stuff even if you're gonna denounce it. Not only is he showing it here, but he's not denouncing it. If anything, he's glorifying it. But I think the most interesting thing in all this is what happened in regards to Asmongol. During his segment with Ethan Klein, Hassan sat there and pretty much insinuated that China did Tibet a favor by... <laughs> I heard about this. ...erasing their culture. Giving the idea that, yes, their culture is inferior. You can even see Ethan making fun of him. Like, oh yeah, <clears throat> China did them a favor, didn't they? And he wasn't... Why? How did we become so dumb, guys? Obviously... It is possible for a culture to be worse than another culture. And all you have to do to understand that's the case is which culture is better. The culture of, um, of what is better right now, you know, no matter what side you're on, what's better right now or the slavery area, era, the segregation era? How about a culture that goes into a, goes into a place and they pillage villages like back in the medieval days? Is that better? Is that the same? Is that just is that just as valid and equivalent to another? Obviously not. When did we all become so dumb? Going against that narrative. Watch. Tibet was literally a feudal uh, slave uh, mandate, uh, uh, in, like so autonomous China was, zone. China, China did them a favor. That was one. I mean. In America, when I say something like this, people get very upset. You know, we, we talk about the Dalai Lama saying, suck my tongue or whatever. But like, that's not far from the norm in normal Tibetan no. existence Human before sacrifice. the Communist Party Some came culture. in. And, and so China took over. unilaterally took over Tibet. Like well, these are their culture. They basically are trying to, you know, homogenize the culture. If your culture, they're it, trying to squoil the religion and the, the part, identity. The part of the part of they did them warlords and this clip made people draw parallels with what Asmongold said. Yeah, that is actually literally what Asmongold was saying. It's like exactly what he's saying. Regardless of if he's right or not, he, that's the argument he was making. A lot of people are up in arms about Asmin saying that a culture is worse than another culture. Listen, you should be liking your own culture. That's the truth. And if you don't, you should be turning it into a different culture. How come Hassan can sit there and say that the Tibet people deserve to Obviously. have their culture erased due to a couple of bad stains in their past and not face any consequences? At this point, this was clear <laughs> favoritism, but it wasn't just limited to Hassan. It also stretched out to everyone who orbited around him, like that Yemeni Houthi that he brought on his stream. The same Houthi that Hassan had given a platform had posted on Twitter, a man This is the guy that Hassan brought on. I saw this picture. And it was this guy? It's a drawing. This was the pirate guy? Don't worry. But regardless, it's still a man getting impaled through his ass to his mouth. And the caption reads, The execution that we will carry out on all Zion. Holy fuck. Now, the Houthi does have a Twitch account. He was banned on there after this tweet, created an alt account signaling ban evasion, which is against Twitch TOS. That account got banned too. And then after 12 hours, both of those accounts got unbanned. What? What? Listen, I have to understand how crazy this is, okay? Making it's so an alt fucking crazy. Is ban evasion. Ban evasion is usually very strictly oh my carried God. out by Twitch, but in this case, it was given a massive exception. This was all happening as the Asmongold stuff was happening too. Hassan was confronted about He this. got banned? Wait, how long did he say it was? Both of those accounts. He got banned for longer than he got. Asmin Gold got banned longer than this guy. Got unbanned. Listen, you have to understand how crazy this is, okay? Making an alt account is ban evasion. Ban evasion is usually very strictly carried out by Twitch, but in this case, it was given a massive exception. This was all happening as the You guys think they have like a fucking wheel? Like one <laughs> you have like one of those dart boards and then they just like throw a dart over the shoulder like, oh, I got 24 hour ban. All right, let's see what kind of ban you get today. Spins the wheel. One day. <laughs> Gold stuff was happening too. Hassan was confronted <laughs> about this, of course, and his response was, Well, hey, at least the drawing he posted wasn't of a Jew, so I don't see what the problem is. 
That's because. <gasps> the man getting impaled on the drawing looked African, so this was nothing more than a very big deflection. This again renewed questions over Hassan's influence and the things he's been doing to this platform. But we were also starting to understand where this favoritism was coming from. Dan Clancy, shortly after taking over as CEO of Twitch, had an interview with Bloomberg. And here's what we discovered in that interview. Not a gamer Ooh. himself, Clancy mostly watches musicians or talk shows on Twitch. He particularly enjoys leftist political commentator Hassan Piker, who has 2.5 million followers of the platform. I like the frankness and bluntness, Clancy said. He's comfortable saying what he believes. I'm not going to sit here and talk to you about what- You know what, though? I will say something, though, that I do appreciate that. That is one, that is one thing that I do like about uh, about Hassan is he just fucking says it, which is uh, good. Because I think everyone- I think people should know what he thinks. Hassan streams are what? I'd rather- I'd rather awful- awful- uh, I would rather awful takes are in the public eye. I'd rather everybody can say- what they the vile things that they believe in so that everybody can know watching or not again i'm here to be objective all i can say is that eight months after this interview hassan brought a houthi yemeni on his stream directly breaking the terms of service on twitch.tv and didn't get banned for it mm -hmm. oh and by the way if you're wondering what kind of streamers dan clancy follows on his own website this is a clip from him showing the upcoming features on the twitch app on mobile where you have a function that works like instagram stories these are all the streamers he fought. You didn't have a burner phone, dude? What the fuck? You know, all incognito mode? <laughs> Follows. <laughs> Interesting. I kind of see a pattern. Oh my god. <laughs> now, what There's no us shot. To this breaking point that we are at, this existential threat <laughs> that Twitch is facing, is the ecosystem that was fostered by Hassan and his community. <clears throat> One of the main <clears throat> people of interest is Frogan. A partner Twitch streamer and someone who is considered a close friend. When it Hasn't she? She's gotten away with a lot. It comes to Hassan. In mid-2024, Ludwig was organizing a charity for Palestine for the people affected by the war. He said he was going to contribute $10,000 of his own money. Frogan's response? Calling him a slur for white people and saying you can keep your 10k, we don't want it. All while she has an emergency rent donation goal at the bottom of her stream. Now, even though Ludwig is considered to be one of Hassan's close friends, Hassan vehemently defended Frogan's usage of the word cracker here, even though she literally is begging for money to pay her rent and hasn't done anything when it comes to- I love how that can just be said, like, uncensored. That's like how little people care about it. They can just say the word with impunity. Donating to Palestinians, Ludwig was giving away $10,000 of his personal money while encouraging his entire community to donate as well. I don't think you need to- But if like a Chinese person says another word, even though it's a different word than their language, fucking deleted. Be a genius to look at this objectively and realize how ridiculous, how much of a farce this all is. Of course, she suffered no consequences. No one did in this case. A trend continued by Twitch. Recently, just on October 20th, 2024, Frogan, yet again with another controversial take, saying that she hopes all American soldiers get PTSD and get denied access to healthcare live on her stream. I'm not gonna sugarcoat this. She literally said every word. Watch. I have no pity at all for any fucking soldiers. Distress, thank you so much. I will never have any fucking pity for any fucking soldiers. U.S. military? Who fucking who? I hope you get PTSD. I hope. Isn't aren't veterans a protected category? Isn't that a protected category in terms of like the whole sexual orientation, blah blah, all that shit? Yes, yeah, that's what I thought. We get PTSD, and I hope you get no health insurance when you get back into the fucking America. There were no immediate consequences after she had said this, and if anything, it brought attention to her very problematic past associated with Twitch. It turned out that Frogan was a part of something called the Arabs Podcast. And at the latest TwitchCon, back in September of 2024, very recently, they held a panel. 2024. This just happened. This was this year. Panel approved by Twitch, in which they had an ethnicity tier list. I'm not even joking. I'm not even making this up. This is real. The whole premise of this was how would a streamer react about saying the word 
Habibi, and had a bunch of streamers ready, with the rankings consisting of Arab, Arab coded, asks permission to say Habibi, thinks Habibi is a slur and wouldn't want to say it, and the last tier being loves Sabra. So of course, Hassan is placed as Arab. I mean, why wouldn't he be? Everyone here loves him and the attention he gives them. A bunch of random streamers that have nothing- Wait, isn't- isn't- wait, what is Sabra? Is, isn't that like- like food? To do with this, like, I don't even know why this is a thing, guys. Don't even ask me. And of course, okay. you have the tier saying love Sabra. Now, what is Sabra? According to Israelis, Sabra hummus is the most popular hummus brand in Israel. Everyone- That well, shit's pretty good, though. I've had that before. It's pretty good. Not bad. There has it in their it's not as good as like actual restaurant hummus though, but it's just pretty decent. Fridge. I think it's fairly straightforward to assume that love Subra <clears throat> means Israeli. All right. But it also has a very unfortunate double meaning. Subra also means a Jew born in Israel. So whether that was intentional or not, I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised, but it definitely doesn't help their case. This is practically an ethnicity tier list in which the top is Arab and the bottom is Jewish. <laughs> that is. Okay, I mean, there's a little plausible deniability there, but it's very sus. Ridiculous, bro. You can see the sponsors right here Capcom, Chevron, Samsung. You can see TwitchCon. This was signed off by Twitch to be on stage this That's was fucking insane streamed at twitchcon this was an event at twitchcon with people sitting in the audience watching this is this is insane what the fuck how the hell did this happen i don't understand how can this oversight happen like this this just shows you how much of a mess twitch is and yet here they were <clears throat> ranking people based on ethnicity i just can't believe i just can't believe this and you know what the funny thing is even if you were arab you probably would not want to be a part of this or associate with people like this because this is just cringe. What the hell is this? I mean, you have a literal Jew, Ethan Klein right here in Love Subra. Like, come on, man, that's crazy. Speaking of Ethan Klein, he's actually been the biggest critic of Twitch and the CEO regarding all this stuff we've talked about in this video so far. When he saw this tier list, he was outraged. And even though at some point he and Hassan were on great terms, he had a lot of criticism towards his behavior and mm -hmm. the people he's promoting. And to many, he was seen in the right. His opinion was warranted. This was crazy. He was saying in his title of his latest podcast, Dan Clancy must resign as Twitch CEO. He also commented on how Hassan reacted to this tier list and had nothing but positive things to say about it. I think I should mention here that Ethan doesn't even consider himself to be a Zionist. He's against Israel's actions, but the only thing he doesn't want is the 8 million Jews born in Israel to not be expelled out of the country. This means that the only thing he and Hassan disagree on is the 8 million Jews point. But still, he's being treated like an outcast and put at the bottom of the ethnicity tier list. The objective question to ask here is, if Asmongold had done a tier list with Israeli on top and Palestinian on the bottom, would he have gotten banned, yes or no? There was clear bias hold in up, Twitch hold now, up, hold up. bottom, would he have- <laughs> This is right here, Secretary of Antifa. <laughs> ...gotten banned, yes or no. Holy shit. There was clear bias at Twitch now towards the whole Palestine and Israel conflict, and as you thought that things could not get worse, it turned out that Ynet, a pretty popular news outlet in Israel, came out with a report saying that Twitch had blocked anyone in Israel from creating a new Twitch account oh ever boy, since here we October go. 13th. That's October 13th, 2023, by the way. So it's been over a <clears> year. <throat> Some people tried switching to a VPN to Israel and they would get the same thing. The IP was immediately blocked from account creation. Really? This is the error code you would see. Error description, blocked country IP. It turned out that ever since them blocking account creation in Israel, people have been reaching out to Twitch support asking, hey, is this normal? And Twitch would reply with something like this. I'm really sorry that you're having issues creating an account. We have reviewed your case thoroughly and can confirm that, unfortunately, you are not eligible to create a Twitch account. As a result... How do I make a kick account? We will be closing your case at this time, explaining absolutely nothing about the situation and just brushing it off and closing the ticket. This was so big that the Times of Israel picked up this story as well, confirming that. No, I'm, not, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna move to kick. Although, like honestly, I probably should make a kick account just in case. Um, it's more that I don't trust any of the companies. 
not like a Twitch specific thing. I, I don't trust any of the companies, so I probably should make a kick account just as like a as a backup, you know? Yes, users in Israel could not create an account. The Jerusalem Post picked up the story as well, echoing the same things that were said in Ynet and the Times of Israel. The streamer The site where the CEOs laugh at uh uh by the name of Dan Can't Stream has made it his I don't know. mission to go after Twitch and prove that they did this deliberately and that this wasn't just a mistake. <clears throat> he says that as early as May 2024, there was a small ignored effort with the hashtag Batluath Twitch, which aimed to get Twitch to answer why they could not create accounts from Israeli creators. While we're talking about this, I should mention that this wasn't There's just no one related on Rumble, to Israeli citizens. This was also related to Palestinian territories such as the West Bank and Gaza. So this accusation was pretty damn big, right? Wait, Twitch what? And Hold on. And just answer why they could not create accounts from Israeli creators. While we're talking about this, I should mention that this wasn't just related to Israeli citizens. This was also related to Palestinian territories such as the West Bank and Gaza. So this accusation was pretty damn big, right? So it, hold on. It, wait, it was also Gaza and the West Bank were also blocked or not blocked? They were also blocked. Right. Twitch, and especially its parent company Amazon, does not want to be perceived as anti-Semitic, but that was exactly how people were perceiving them now. So not even a day after these okay. accusations started surfacing, Twitch support made a tweet. We wanted to address... Isn't that... Hold on, wait. If, if that's true, again, using our logic here, if it's true that, that, you know, the West Bank and Palestine were also blocked, doesn't that kind of... Does, doesn't that lead you to believe that it wasn't Israel specifically then? Concerns we've seen about whether we're preventing Twitch account signups in some regions. When signing up for a Twitch account, you can select an account verification method. No, it's just because Israel provides net infrastructure. So, oh, I see, I see. So they had to, they had to block it basically because it all went through Israel. I see, I see what you Email or phone for added protection. Fair enough, fair October enough. October 7, 2023 attacks, we temporarily disabled signups with the email verification in Israel and Palestine. We did this to prevent uploads of graphic material related to the attack and to protect the safety of users. Okay. Signups were not disabled and we continue to see signups from both regions. Users could choose to sign up with phone verification. We've learned that inadvertently, we did not re-enable email verification signups for either region. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna interrupt this tweet real quick to mention something. This argument falls apart when you realize that they didn't do this when- Yeah, they didn't do this for Ukraine. Russia invaded Ukraine. Mm -hmm. They didn't do this to Yemen. They didn't do this to Lebanon. Yep. And they didn't do this to Myanmar. A bunch of countries currently at war. Mm -hmm. Anyway, let's continue. We deeply regret this unacceptable miss and the confusion it has caused. We fixed the issue, meaning all affected users can sign up with email verification. We've also you know what's weird though? It hold on. I'm trying to get like in the head of like what reason this would be for. Like, let's assume the worst. Like, let's assume the absolute worst and that, like, they, they actually don't like people from there. Again, I, I'm, I'm assuming, I'm not saying this is true. L hypothetically, if they actually didn't, what is the point? Like, that's, like, so weak. You know, like, like I don't like, I don't like this region, so I'm just going to block them. <laughs> like, it's so weak. What the fuck? <laughs> like. Concerns it's about so weak guidelines apply to all content on our service we continue to enforce our rules as consistently as possible and are actively reviewing content and taking enforcement action where needed so this last paragraph was in reference to frogan and her panel in twitchcon with the ethnicity tier list as well as hassan but they were pretty much saying that oh don't worry only email verification was disabled phones still worked we still received signups however <laughs> as you can see right here they got community noted both email registration and phone registration were blocked. Ooh. Dan can't stream yet again, coming up with a tweet disproving Twitch saying, hey, Dan Clancy, about mobile signup still working thing, sure doesn't fucking seem like it. Thank mm -hmm. God we took recordings before he did damage control, attaches a video showing that mobile signup was not working in Israel, saying resign anti-Semite to Dan Dang. Clancy. So in this video, as you can see, there's going to be a phone number put in and... <laughs> It doesn't work. The fucking the name, dude. Dan the fucking name there. The Twitch support tweet saying, we just posted an explanation of what happened on Twitch support. Please look at this tweet. Very sorry about this oversight. It only came to our attention today. As mentioned in the tweet, it did not affect people using mobile phone verification. Again, very sorry this occurred. This was getting so out of hand that even the Anti-Defamation League 
an American organization made to stop the defamation of Jewish people had to reach out directly to Twitch to ask for answers and to express their disappointment. Holy this shit. When things took a turning point. Look, objectively speaking, when the ADL reaches out to you out of concern as a company, it means that unless you change your course of action, you're about to lose every single sponsor on God's green earth. So Twitch is now in full damage control mode. They immediately reissued a ban on the Houthi Yemeni's Twitch channel. He usually streamed things like Rocket League, right? But this time I think it's permanent. And they banned every single streamer on the Twitch sponsored panel. Let me just remind you, this was at TwitchCon, but every single streamer here, including Frogan and Denims, the person who threatened Asmund Gold's life for $30,000, got banned for 30 days. This is not a permanent- It's like the fucking Avengers of- <laughs> The fucking Avengers of shitty people over Man, here. This is a 30 day ban. Now, people were wondering how the whole lineup like this could happen. Almost a year of people in Israeli and Palestinian territories not able to create an account truly made people wonder if this was an oversight or if it was done on purpose. Well, Twitch had a lot of layoffs in the beginning of the year, 500 employees, and Dan Can's stream pretty much revealed that most of these layoffs were on the trust and safety team and were relocated to a cheaper location, which is Egypt, a country that doesn't famously have a friendly relationship with Israel. So Dan's theory is that this was why the trust and safety team was so anti-Israel, because they were Egyptians. As this was all happening, a website... It's not my fault, it's the Egyptians! Holy shit. By the name of DanClancySucks.com got made, hoping to get him fired. Saying Dan Clancy's Twitch is an anti-Semitic hellhole, showing you clips of Ethan Klein complaining about this ethnicity tier list they had at TwitchCon, how they banned Israeli and Palestinian accounts, Hassan's many cases of problematic behavior, about how Dan Clancy enjoys watching Hassan. So yes, while the ethnicity tier list streamers got banned- I'm a little bit less lol about the Hassan thing and just the fact that it was all like freaking- It was like his entire feed was like titty streamers. That's actually so funny. It was like the funniest thing ever. Hassan still has not been touched. The reason why so many are pushing for his ban is for fairness, is for, in their eyes, justice. Many are hoping that now, after the ADL and Stop Antisemitism and many other Jewish organizations reached out to Twitch, that we would finally see changes when it comes to their very inconsistent bans that have much favoritism attached to them. Whenever someone mentions Twitch, they have to mention Amazon, their parent company, and I'm sure Amazon does not want to have problems with people like the Anti-Defamation League. More importantly though, this all happened under Dan Clancy's leadership. And it remains to be seen whether Amazon will force him to resign or whether he'll walk away scot-free. The fact that this is being picked up by a lot of the media is showing that this is going to have a very negative impact on Twitch's reputation. And Amazon will definitely be keeping an eye out on that. Let's see what happens. But for now, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you watched till the end, I love you so much. That's You're unfortunate. Awesome. And yeah, I'll see I you mean, the next thing video. is, is like, like to be honest, I really do like Twitch. I think Twitch has a different uh, outside of all of this, you know, this, this shit that we're looking at right now and like the whole anti-semitism thing and you know outside of all that i think twitch actually does have a completely different feel than like a place like youtube i i streamed on youtube many times but like i feel like twitch feels a lot more personal it feels like a lot more more chill a lot more like we're just hanging out versus like something like youtube feels more formal i guess oh dude this is my favorite person right here Alyssa Mercante. Fuck. But, <laughs> but, but yeah, it's, it, you can't take it seriously. I don't want to go into it, but Twitch is a really great platform for like kind of hanging out and, you know, having like a, like a sort of chill, just, just hanging out vibe versus, you know, the, how, how formal it feels like on YouTube. Um, I haven't tried kick owned was very different because it was kind of, it was more because of the times not because of the platform but back then like streaming was even more casual than it is now um you didn't really have like too many overlays or anything like that it was kind of just a lot it was pretty raw you know yeah i don't know i mean hopefully hopefully this gets sorted and uh you know obviously i'm all for consistency with rule with the with the rules it should be it should be a lot more consistent a lot more clear um the clarity of like what gets you banned and what doesn't get you banned 
and more consistency and enforcement obviously would be really really good um i don't i don't know if it's true but i don't doubt it actually i would believe it if people told me that the enforcement was biased and i think that's the problem the problem is regardless of if the enforcement is biased or not assume it's like say we could assume it's not biased it still feels biased right so because it feels biased it's gonna lead to bad feelings all around so like having a lot more clarity um a lot more consistency i think will help kind of build the trust back in that uh yeah horny content favoritism that's pretty funny i'm not gonna lie <laughs>